How well do you know today's modern English? If words like brodus or bay sound foreign to you, you're not alone. <laughs> do they sound foreign to you? Maybe. <laughs> the lexicon of language is always evolving, and millennials are paying a big role in shaping modern dialogue. Here to share some words we need to know <laughs> is Jean-Pierre. He's the founder of Swagger.com. Thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Tell us a little bit about how you see language changing. Yeah, well, it's funny. It's starting to get a lot shorter, right? I mean, lots of young people need to speak within 140 characters and they want to be able to speak across platforms so on Twitter Facebook Instagram snapchat these words need to make sense across all of those platforms and so you're finding them to be a lot shorter really it's turning to RLY no big deal and BD and now you're starting to see even emojis replacing words so that you can fit it within 140 characters things are getting very quick that's our attention spans are that short that we're going to emojis I know oxford.com put the laughing crying emoji in their dictionary. Yes, yeah, so in 2014, they say that it is the biggest word of 2015, sorry. Mm -hmm. And the idea that it's actually not even a word, but an image yeah. is huge. But they say that that laughing, crying emoji, 20% of all emojis used were, were that one. And that's where we've gotten now, where you know images replace mm -hmm. full words. Let's talk about the words on this year's list because a lot of them are very political, which mm -hmm. seems very fitting. There's one on there, it is a Bernie bro. Mm -hmm. I'm quite sure my mother does not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, it's actually uh, the Bernie bro is not really approved by the Bernie Sanders team. What it is is actually it's a mob. They've called it a mob of young men who have attacked Hillary supporters and Hillary herself on social media, on message boards, on Twitter, saying either you're only voting for Hillary because she's a woman, she's actually not the best for women's rights. He's also, the Bernie bros have also gone after Black Lives Matter activists saying if you want to vote for a candidate, it's not Hillary Clinton. Bernie has your back. And so these young men have sort of been mansplaining um, why one should vote for Bernie. And he's Stan said, listen, guys, if you're going to vote for me, please be respectful. Um, so, yes, that was a little sketchy on the side of the, the Bernie. It was a sketchy moment for uh, Bernie. I have to go back because I don't know what yeah. mansplaining was. Oh, what does that mean? Mansplaining. So mansplaining is just when a man explains how things should be done. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. How about Brodus? I've heard this one tossed around, <laughs> especially in, in talking about Bill Clinton. Yes. So now this is my favorite political <laughs> word that's sort of rising, and I've said it colloquially, colloquially with friends thus far. But, you know, Flotus, Michelle Obama, has really been able to infiltrate sort of um, colloquial language. And so a lot of people are wondering, well, Who's going to be the next FLOTUS? And if it happens to be, if Hillary Clinton happens to become president, actually it's going to be a man. So how is he going to fill those role? And so people are saying that he is going to be the Brodus, well, the cool like husband of the president. I, we're focusing on Democrats right now, but the, on the Republican side, they've been getting in on the action too. Rubio did a little take on, with Bay. Yes, Rubio. Yes, amazing. In his merch store, he has a shirt and uh, and stickers that say Rubio. Now Ru Bay means before anyone else, and it's supposed to be a lover or a partner. And so it made a lot of sense for him, a good play on words, because of course, if you were going to vote for Rubio, then you would put him before anyone else on a ticket. And we've seen some good examples of politicians using um, these words. And we have one example from the First Lady, Michelle Obama. So let's listen to that for a second. Turn up for what? Turn up for what? <laughs> is that an actual turn up? <laughs> yes, it is. So it was part of her Let's Move campaign, getting young people to stay active. Um, and I, she's just a mastermind when it comes to using youth language or mm -hmm. youthful language to getting her point across. She's also said by Felicia, uh, which was a huge really? moment. Really? Yes, it went viral after she said it. She's, she was just great. Well, well, we were talking before we started that it's all in the delivery. And, you know, some people can get away with it and some people can't. Uh, we also have another example from President Obama. Let's listen mm -hmm. to that one. Folks want to pop off and have opinions about uh, what they think they would do. Present a specific plan. Folks want to pop off, pop off, pop off, pop. Folks want to pop off, pop off, pop off, pop off. Folks want to pop off. Now, 
this became a huge viral hit when he did this. Viral phenomenon. I mean, nobody expected that he would say pop off. I mean, it really is happening in the subculture, in urban communities specifically. So the fact that he just sort of off, you know, offhandedly said it, it was amazing. People cut the clip down to five seconds and just played it over and over and over again. But some of these are fun and you can have fun with it and they're funny. But then some of them, when these politicians use it, I feel like then it's kind of like nerd alert. This didn't yes. work. Sometimes it feels like pandering. Um, actually, Hillary Clinton tweeted once, um, tell us how your student debt makes you feel in three emojis or less. And that was a moment in which you thought, well, actually, uh, my student debt hurts me, and I don't want to put it in some vapid emojis. And she saw a lot of uh, sort of uh, hate mail or uh, negative tweets for having done that. You've predicted some of these um, you know, popular culture words that have crossed into the mainstream. Mm -hmm. What are some of the best examples you can give us of those? Yes. So, uh, by Felicia, again, it was, was happening. By it was a great <laughs> one. There's also one that is recently popping up, which is Slay. Beyonce just used it in her latest song, Formation, and in the video. And that comes from the sort of queer um, downtown voguing culture of New York. And it just means you're doing an amazing job. Keep slaying. Keep slaying. Keep slaying. So if I I go home and I tell my kids to keep slaying. Yes. I'll get some points there. <laughs> what if I say that Meg's dress is on fleek? Is that still one? All right. So on fleek is having a sort of a denouement, if you will. Uh, it's no longer as hot as it oh, used to be. So if you sorry. could retire that, uh, that you're retire probably it. I missed it. I missed be on the, the right like, side so. of history and retire on fleek. All right. That's great, Sean Pierre. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.